hi all so today we are going to do some problems based on the signal flow graph that is using the mason's gain formula okay so the problem is the first one is find the overall gain c of s by r of s for the signal flow graph shown in figure one okay so this is the graph shown here okay. so while you are copying the graph uh, from the figure uh, absolute uh, care is needed that is you have to mark each and every node correctly you have to mark every gain correctly mark the directions correctly okay these are forward and these are feedback gains and the, uh, the uh, gain is minus h1 because it is a negative feedback one okay so all of the values okay all of the values should be marked correctly okay if if you have marked any of the values uh, by mistake okay then uh, it is going to be a uh, last answer okay, that is the last time function uh, will not be true okay so the entire mark will be lost for you okay so absolute care is needed while copying the figure from the question paper okay and uh, if you are going to find the solution the first step is to find the forward path gains the forward path okay how can you find the forward path here okay the first forward path is uh, this one starting from r of us that is from the node 1 g1 g2 g3 g4 and up to c of us okay so this is the first forward path okay then what is the next forward path okay what will be the next forward path here that is this g1 g2 and g6 okay so this is the next forward path then again we should uh, check for any other forward path exist or not okay uh, so while we are checking there is there are no another forward path okay so uh, there may be some doubt regarding this loop okay that is uh, this is g1 g2 g3 and uh, g5 and g4 okay you may think this is this as another forward path but it is not true because because the loop okay this is a loop starting from the same node ending ending at the same node okay so uh, just it is a part of the first forward okay that is uh, we have to consider the first forward path only okay so this is the first forward path and this is the second forward path okay and we are not considering this as a forward path okay because this is starting from the node and the ending at the same node okay so we can consider only it as a loop okay so uh, k is equal to 2 and we have to write the forward path gains okay so the forward path gains will be g1 g2 g3 g4 and g1 g2 g6 okay g1 g2 g6 there is here here we are denoting it as p1 as the first forward path and p2 as the second forward path okay and next we are going for, to find the individual loop gains individual loop gains okay that is first we have to find what are the loops exist so here you can see this is a loop and uh, this one is a loop second loop and this one is a loop and again this is a loop okay so there are five loops okay there are five loops in the system okay another one is another one loop is this one okay that is starting from here and ending here that is g2 g6 and minus h3 so this is also a loop okay so at most care is needed when you are finding the loops okay so normally uh, these loops okay this loop may not be uh, noticed by you okay <laughs> you may leave this loop so at most care is needed to find while we are finding the loops okay so this one is a loop and uh, this is a loop and another one is this and another loop is this and the last loop is this one okay so we have to find the individual loop gains so first we are uh, denoting it as the first loop as this one that is g2 g3 minus h h1 
that is here you can see g2 g3 minus h2 this is the first loop okay so the uh, loop gain for the interval loop 1 is p11 that is uh, minus g2 g3 h1 here it is minus so uh, while we are multiplying these three values it becomes minus g2 g3 h1 okay p11 we have been raised p11 and uh, we are considering this as a second loop and the loop gain is g2 into minus h2 so minus g2 h2 okay and uh, here in the textbook it is denoted as p21 okay p21 but uh, uh, if you can represent if it has p22 it will be very simple to remember that is p22 as minus g2 h2 because it is the second loop so p22 okay and next we are considering this as a third loop okay that is this one this one as the third loop okay so uh, we are denoting it as p33 if we can denoting it as p33 but here it is p31 only but if you can write it as p33 okay p33 means g2 g6 into minus 3 that is minus g2 g6 s3 that is minus g2 g6 s3 this is a p33 okay you should note down like this this is a simple method okay and another one is the p44 p44 is g2 g3 g4 into minus h3 that is minus g2 g3 g4 h3 this is the p44 and uh, last one is this is a loop that is p55 okay so g5 only g5 is there so g5 is a loop gain p55 so p11 p22 p33 p44 p55 okay if you are writing like this that is p11 p22 p33 like this so we can easily name the non-touching loops based on this one different pairs of non-touching loops okay uh, so this is the second step okay and next we are moving to the third step that is gain product of two non-touching loops you have to find which loops are non-touching here okay so while observing this graph while observing this graph uh, which loops are non-touching okay that are the different non-touching loops so uh, you can see that this one that is uh, g2 minus g2 h2 loop and this g5 loop are non-touching okay so this is the first pair of non-touching loop okay this is the first pair okay minus g2 h2 and g5 so we have to find the gain product of these two loops so we have to multiply all the gains together okay that is uh, we are denoting it as this this loop this loop uh, we are considering it as p22 and this one is as p55 this is p22 and this is p55 so the gain product loop we can write as p25 okay p25 so this one is the p25 okay if you can write as like this it will be very, very simple okay easy to remember p25 means combining the two loops p22 and p55 okay so p22 means uh, from this as uh, you obtain p22 as minus g2 h2 that is minus g2 h2 and p55 as this one g5 so minus g2 h2 into g5 that is g2 g5 h2 this is the p25 okay and another uh, is there any other pair of non-touching loops of course is there that is this loop and this one is again non-touching okay this loop and this loop is again non-touching so we have to find the gain product of that one so this one and this one okay so normally this loop we are considering it as the third loop loop 3 that is p33 this one is p55 okay so p33 and p55 so we get it as p35 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 means again product of p33 and p55 okay so uh, g2 g6 into minus h3 that is minus g2 g6 h3 into g5 okay so we will get it as minus g2 g5 g6 into h3 okay so this is the p35 loop okay p35 for game okay then is there any other loop exist any other two non-touching loops this is a uh, lo uh, this is a loop but there are 
no other non touching loops pair of non touching loops are available here okay so only uh, two pairs of non touching loops are available this one and this okay and uh, is there any other three non touching loops are available three non touching loops there are no three non touching loops here okay while observing this figure we can't find any three non touching loops from this figure so we can avoid this okay so that's the third step that is gain part of two non touching loops okay then we have to calculate the delta and delta k delta means equation for delta means we know that uh, one minus one minus sum of individual loop gains one minus sum of individual loop gains plus gain product of two non touching loops minus gain product of three non touching loops sum of gain product of three non touching loops like that okay so that is the equation that is the equation we can so you see here this is the equation one minus sum of individual loops plus sum of gain product of all possible combination of two non touching loops minus sum of gain product of three non touching loops like that so here uh, only this part is there there is there are no three non touching loops so here we can only consider this one that is one minus sum of individual loop plus sum of gain product of two non touching loops okay that's all so we can find delta as uh, delta is equal to one minus sum of all individual loop that is p11 plus p22 plus p3 here it is p11 p2 like that but we have denoted as p11 p22 p33 like that okay so 1 minus p11 okay listen carefully uh, 1 minus p11 plus p22 plus p33 plus p44 plus p55 okay P five five. That is one minus sum of individual loops plus. Okay, plus sum of gain product of two non-touching loops. Okay, sum of gain product of two non-touching. That is this P three five. This P three five and P two five. Okay. This is P two five. This one is P25 and this one is P35. So we can write as here, we can write as plus P25 plus P35. Like that. Okay. That is here, I can write here P25 plus P35. Okay. Instead of this P12 and P22, we are writing as, as P25 and P35. Okay. So that's all. And we have to substitute all these values here. Okay. That is 1 minus P11 means we know it as minus G2 G3 H1. That is P11. P11 is minus G2 G3 H1. All we have to substitute here. Okay. And uh, P25 means this and uh, P35 means this. And we are substituting that also here. Okay. So that's the value of delta. This is the value of delta. Okay. And next we are going to find the value of delta 1 delta 1 and delta 2 because delta 1 and delta 2 uh, comes be, uh, because uh, here two forward paths are there that is p1 and p2 okay so our, our equation actually equation is pk into delta k that is p1 into delta 1 sigma k pk delta k means p1 delta 1 plus p2 delta 2 plus p3 delta 3 like that okay so here uh, two forward paths are there that is p1 and p2 so we have to find delta 1 and delta 2 okay here two forward path p1 and p2 are there so we have to find delta 1 and delta 2 okay so what is this uh, delta 1 and delta 2 delta 1 means actually this delta 1 means delta for that part of the graph that is you can read the definition from here there is delta for that part of the graph which is not touching k at the forward path that is delta 1 means delta for that part of the graph which is not touching first forward path which is not touching first forward path okay so here the first forward path is this first forward path is this okay so we have to find the delta for that first forward path that is uh, we have to find the individual loops not touching the first forward path so uh, while observing this figure there is no such loops which is not touching the first forward path because this is the loop this is touching the first forward path 
and this is also this touching the first word path and this one is also touching the first word path and this one is also touching the first word path so in that case the delta one will be we are denoting it as delta one is equal to one because since there is no part of the graph which is not touching forward path one so delta one we are denoting it as delta one is equal to one okay that is because delta equation for delta is one minus individual loop gains okay so here only one is there this individual loop gains are zero okay because here we have to find the individual loop gains of that loop which is not touching the first word path okay and delta 2 means we have to find the uh, delta for that part which is not touching second second forward path okay because here this is the second forward path. okay this one is the this one is the second forward path so uh, we have to find whether is there any loop axis which is not touching the second forward path of course is there that is this loop is not touching the second forward path okay so we can write the equation delta 2 as 1 minus 1 minus uh, individual loop gain sum of individual loop gain so here individual loop gain means individual loop gain of all that loops which is not touching the second forward path so here only this loop is here that is not touching second forward path so the gain of this loop is g5 so 1 minus g5 delta 2 will be 1 minus g5 okay and after that we can simply substitute these values in the mason gain formula that is t is equal to 1 by delta pk delta k okay sigma k pk delta k so k is 2 so it becomes uh, p1 delta 1 plus p2 delta 2 divided by delta okay 1 by delta into p1 delta 1 plus p2 delta 2 okay all these values we have found okay and uh, p1 is uh, we are just substituting the p1 delta 1 p2 delta 2 value here and the delta value in the denominator okay and uh, we will get the trans function p as this one okay this so here um, you should be very very careful while writing this equation okay that is the term should not be changed this is g1 g2 g3 g4 and h1 h3 like that okay and uh, the signs minus plus okay all the signs should be uh, marked carefully okay if any of the sign or if any of the uh, terms are marked incorrectly then the term function becomes incorrect okay so uh, a perfect care is needed here so this is the last equation transfer function okay i hope uh, it's very really clear and we are doing uh, one more problem okay that is just note down this figure okay just note down this figure and based on this figure just try to find the overall transfer function of the system so this is your assignment and uh, you have to submit your assignment okay so this is the problem and uh, note down okay write down just draw the signal for graph very really carefully okay and uh, mark each thing okay each thing correctly minus h2 minus h1 and all the nodes should be marked correctly and you have to find the overall transfer function of the system okay so I hope all of you understand the problem of the signal flow graph correctly. So thank you.